All right, folks. So I just wanted to do a quick video where I reach out to the community to determine what is the best DMR radio or digital mobile radio. Um, I'm in the market to buy a digital radio, and I've decided to go with DMR versus DSTAR or any of the other uh, protocols or systems out there. And uh, what I wanted to do is just reach out to everybody and get some opinions and share a little bit of research that I did. So going into this, uh, I took a look at the usual suspects. Um, iLunes is a very popular radio these days. It's getting a lot of airplay. It's getting a lot of social media. Um, I took a look at the, uh, the one of the Baofangs, the uh, RD5R, uh, BTEC offering uh, radios from Radio Oddity, Retevis, Retivis, depending on how you say it, Anytone and TYT. If there's any radios that I missed, go ahead and uh, make a comment down below. I'm going to say positive and negative things about all of these radios. Um, please don't take them as an insult. Different radios work well for different people. Uh, for this particular uh, purchase, I'm budgeting about $200. Um, there's radios that are as low as around 75 all the way up to around 200 250 uh, with all the accessories. So anyhow, let's just go ahead and uh, get started. So what I wanted to do first is start off with a list of must-have things. These are requirements that I have that I think will make my uh, DMR experience more enjoyable. Um, I'm only considering handheld radios. I'm not considering mobiles or base stations. Uh, I want a radio that's dual band, UHF and VHF. I know that uh, early on some of the mobile uh, DMR radios or handheld DMR radios were either UHF or VHF. Uh, where I live in my area, there are a number of digital, digital or DMR uh, repeaters on both frequencies. And so that's important to me. The other one is I want a large user ID database. Uh, what I want to be able to do is I want to download, you know, 100,000 different uh, user IDs, and I want to have attributes for those user IDs. I just don't want to see their ID number. I want to see their name, location, call sign. I want to be able to see a lot of information about the folks that I'm communicating with. Um, I want the radio to be programmable from the radio. Um, I would prefer to program radios with a computer, and that's important. But in the event that I'm out in the field, I want to be able to go ahead and use the interface to go ahead and program the radio. And this is because the radio that I'm looking for will likely be my, uh, daily, my daily radio, something that I carry with me every day. So I'm going to be using it both uh, on analog and digital, and I may need to make some adjustments. Um, the other thing is, is I want... Uh, um, clear information. Uh, I want a rich screen. I want a lot of information on the screen. I don't want to have to dig through menus. I don't want to have to uh, only get one line of information. I want to have multiple lines of information. Uh, the next thing is waterproof. I prefer a radio that is uh, waterproof, uh, something that can get wet, uh, pre uh, preferably be submersed in water, and, and work fine. I have an asterisk there because the way people define waterproof is always different. Everybody says, well, it's splashproof, it's rainproof, it's submersible. Uh, but for me, I really am looking for something that's submersible, if possible. Um, but I would be willing to concede there. The other one is, is that uh, I wanted positive reviews. I don't want a radio that everybody bags on. And um, that's positive reviews from people who know what they're talking about, respected reviewers. Uh, I'm not looking for somebody who's going to say that anything that was sent to them or anything that they bought was great. Uh, I'm looking uh, for something that has a little bit of discretion applied to it. And the other one is, is that user community, a lot of these radios, uh, people are just learning. It's new. Uh, so you want a good, positive user community that supports other users, not with negative comments, um, and, and produces information that's consumable. Nice to have. Uh, the first one I put on here is third-party antenna capable, and, and you'll see why later on in the presentation. Um, I had support for an external microphone. I think everything that I looked at has support for an external microphone, but uh, I do want to be able to use this radio potentially in a vehicle. Uh, maybe it's going to be a vehicle mount, and uh, I'm going to have to use a handheld microphone. Um, the next thing is something I'm surprised about that you don't often see in a lot of reviews. Um, I'm looking for a super heterodyne receiver versus direct conversion, and uh, there's a couple of different reasons here. Um, the biggest uh, super heterodyne uh, receivers are more expensive, but what they do is, is they have a, a layer of filtering, I think is the best way to say it, and, and I'm a little bit new to this. Um, but what it allows is, is that if there are other DMR radios in your area that are transmitting, it won't desensitize your receiver. 
Um, you'll be able to focus in or filter in on the signals that you're concerned about. And when you use direct conversion, which is a little bit of a cheaper um, receiver type, which is the most common, uh, a lot of times if you're communicating, uh, somebody else communicating the digital radio can, can wipe out your ability to receive. And uh, where this is important is, is in emergency communications, uh, direct responders, uh, first responders. And, that, and that's kind of why you don't see these uh, cheaper cheaper Chinese uh, handheld DMR radios being used by professional services. They're typically using something that has a super heterodyne receiver. Now you'll see that in plenty of radios, um, but there's other limitations just given the cost. Like a lot of times the super hetero uh, receivers aren't, aren't dual band, for example. The next one is, is uh, software support for Linux or Apple. Um, I am not uh, a big fan of Windows uh, or Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8, and uh, I would prefer to be able to use a Linux or an Apple environment, preferably a Raspberry Pi, to be able to program our radio. Um, I haven't seen a single DMR radio that uh, affords this ability. If there's one that you know about or one that you've seen, please let me know. I'd really be interested in that. Another nice to have would be rechargeable without a docking station. Uh, if I could just put put a USB cable or you know a 12 volt cable something right into the radio, um, that would make uh, field communications, uh, mobility, portability a lot easier than if I had to tote around a docking station that needed a 110 um, uh, 110 volt um, wall ward or adapter. Um, GPS. Not 100% sure why I think GPS would be nice to have, but uh, for beaconing or just even given a location, um, I'd rather have that capability than not have that capability if I don't have to compromise anything, and I'd be willing to pay a little bit more money for it. Um, the next one is reasonable cost of ownership. As I mentioned, I'm looking at around a budget of $200. Um, and that's that. That's two hundred. Maybe going above that, if you know you need to buy a hand mic or an extra battery or or, or, or power cable. I'm sorry, or a programming cable, something along those lines. But I'm really looking for something that ships with extra. I'd like to just buy a kit or a package that has uh, all the things that I need in it. I, I get that. That's a. I'm dreaming there, and it's probably not going to happen. Anyhow, with that being said, uh, we took a look at the usual suspects, and there are a number of radios that I'm not considering for a variety of reasons. Um, the first one is the Baofeng RD5R. From my research and what I've, what I've read, um, it's buggy. If you look at the, uh, the image down there, uh, I have poor screen. You know, it's, it's a monochrome screen. It doesn't have a lot of information on there. There's lots of conversations around build, build quality, um, and it gets poor reviews. Now, there are some people out there who give it uh, glowing reviews and say how great this radio is, but I, I think that if you take a look at uh, a lot of um, reviews from folks who uh, have a good, solid uh, history of performing uh, reviews, this one probably doesn't get the best ones. Now, I, this is probably a little hypocritical for me because um, I'm a Balfang enthusiast and I have no problem using them in the analog world, just not the digital world. For me, I would rather spend a little bit more money and get a little bit quality of a digital radio because I, I don't want to buy two or three of them. I want to buy one digital radio that lasts me for a while and has plenty of capability. And I just don't see that in this Balfang. The next one is the Radio Oddity GD77. Again, uh, folks talk about it being buggy, talk about build, build quality, and, and it does get, it gets positive and poor reviews. But again, from uh, folks that I feel that know what they're talking about, they're, they're more poor than positive. The other thing is, is that Radio Oddity was part of a debacle, uh, you know, about two years ago when DMR started to first become popular, where they were producing radios that they were claiming were Tier 2, but they were Tier 1. And, um, you know, if you're a company like Radio Oddity, you should know what you're selling. And if you're selling something uh, as Tier 1 and you're going to guarantee a firmware update's going to fix it in the future when you know it's a hardware problem, I really have a hard time supporting a company like that. Um, just being honest, I was really enthusiastic about the RD5R and the GD77 and uh, almost purchased them multiple times. Uh, but I was able to hold out and, uh, you know, maybe some better thoughts prevailed. And I just, I'd love to have one of these to play around with, but I just don't see making the investment because I don't know if the investment's really going to pay off. The other one is I took a look at some of the TYT, the MD380, the MD390, and some of these uh, have problems with being dual band. They were usually single band. The programming interface wasn't exactly that good. Um, I do believe that there is a version, the UV380, that is dual band in the TYT. 
But again, uh, I'm just not sure that it has some of the other things that, that I, I'm looking for in the must-have and the nice-to-have categories. Um, and then I put Redivis RT82, and I get that there's other Redivis models, but, uh, you know, there's stuff about the trackball, or the, it, it's poor reviews. Um, you know, potentially that's something I would look at, but I, I just didn't consider it for this, uh, for, for this conversation or video. And so the radios that I did consider, the ones that I'm uh, interested in, would be the iLunes, I think that's how you say it, the HD um, or the HD1 and the HD1 G GPS, because we talked a little bit about GPS being something that's potentially important. Um, the other one I came across is the BTEC DMR um, 6X2. It's a 6 watts on UHF and VHF is where the name came from. And uh, one of the things uh, about this radio is it's a little bit newer, and I worry that people say, oh, B-Tech, that's the American Baofeng company. Baofeng sucks. China sucks. Don't buy it. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's not a very good radio. And uh, I'm not entirely convinced of that. Uh, this radio impresses me for a couple of reasons. Um, and then the other one is the, uh, the Anytone. It's the ATD686 uh, UV. And it looks like uh, my language got cut off a little bit there when I put these icons in. Um, this radio uh, has a lot of positive reviews. It has a pretty good uh, community behind it, and, uh, and, and, and from what I understand, performs quite well. And so uh, that's why this one made it into the list. So what I wanted to do is just run through some pros and cons for each one of the radios that I'm interested in. And uh, this is a radio that has been uh, getting a lot of airtime on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Twitter, um, the iLunes HD1 GPS, and uh, it, it some of the pros, it's, it's, it's front panel programmable, which is a big deal. And um, people are like, it's built for hams. Hams need to program in the field, and uh, this, this radio is built to do that. It's dual band. It's uh, waterproof. It's my understanding that it can be submerged in water, submerged in water. It has a GPS. Um, it has a large user ID database, uh, 100,000, which would cover every digital user on the planet at this point. Uh, it ships with a programming cable, so that helps with the cost of ownership. It is a pricey radio. It's about 199 bucks for the GPS version. Um, it gets great reviews and has large community support, and it's 10 watts. I mean, this is some fantastic stuff here. Um, we're going to take a look and talk a little bit th about those great reviews in a second. Um, some of the cons... Well, it comes with a USB cable. That USB cable is actually a COM port interface. A COM port interfaces are antiquated. They're slow. Um, it's just it's just old technology. I don't I don't know how uh, that really helps this radio moving forward. Um, the engineering team, if perhaps it was a cost cutting measure, really should have not used COM port interfaces. Uh, the other one is this Windows only support. I really, as mentioned, would prefer Linux or Apple. It uses the direct conversion receiver, which uh, I have seen demonstrations where um, this radio has gotten stepped on by other radios, other DMR radios transmitting in the same area. Um, and the next thing, and I, I really held back here because I don't want to trash this radio because I think the jury is still out, but um, there's an antenna mismatch is issue. Uh, a lot of people are saying that this radio doesn't, uh, it, it's rated to work on a 50 ohms impedance for antennas, and they're saying it's just not right. Um, the, the, the radio itself, uh, the output is probably more like 30 ohms is what people are saying, and um, the antenna is not a 50 ohm antenna either. There's a lot of uh, information. If you actually go, we talked about large community support. If you go to the uh, iLunes HD1 um, Facebook support group, uh, you'll see there, and just do a quick search on uh, antenna problems, and um, you'll see a lot of posts around people who are having problems with this radio when using um, antennas other than the stock antenna. And, and what's important about this is, is that um, I have no problem using a stock antenna, and that, that might not be an issue for me, but again, if I want to go mobile, and this this uh, radio is in my car, I might use a mag mount antenna. I might use uh, a permanently mount antenna. And I don't want to introduce problems that might, uh, SWR problems is really what's manifesting here. And I don't want to burn out a $200 radio. I don't, I don't think that that's crazy. Um, while there's a lot of positive things about this radio, I, I'm just not convinced that it's entirely done. Um, you know, at the same time, maybe it's not a big issue for you. Maybe you're going to transmit on a uh, lower wattage. Uh, really, what seems to be the problem is transmissions of 10 watts on UHF. Um, but again, the company uh, Redivis makes this radio, hasn't really commented on it to a point where the user community is satisfied, is my understanding. 
But you have a lot of people saying, hey, this radio is fine. There's nothing wrong with it um, because they bought it and they spent 200 bucks on it and, and they want to feel like they made a good decision. The other thing is, is a lot of people who are producing reviews um, on YouTube about this radio aren't even testing this stuff. So they're, they're not measuring the impedance of the antenna. They're not, they're not checking to see if other antennas work on there, measuring the SWR, which is, you know, it's pretty bad. Uh, if, if you consider yourself a reviewer, you should probably make sure that any product that you're recommending um, doesn't have a problem like this. I, I, I can see this being an issue. Not as bad as the Radio Oddity um, early Balfang DMR radio. But, uh, you know, if you start to have a lot of people burning up their radios, it's, it's going to come back and it's going to get you. So anyhow, um, in just talking to people, uh, some of them were like, hey, I don't believe this is an issue, or how, how, how big is it? Um, so anyhow, this specifications right here is from the user manual, and it says right here, antenna impedance 50 ohms. Further down in the user manual, what I did find was this warning. It says the antenna in the packaging is unique. Please do not optional change. I really don't know what that means. I know that iLoom sells uh, maybe a 14 and a half, a little bit larger uh, whip antenna that you can buy for this radio. But um, I, I don't know if what they're saying here is, is that, hey, our antenna is matched. Don't buy another antenna. Just use a stock antenna. But where that becomes an issue, like I mentioned, is, is maybe you're in a car mount. One of the other things I'd like to do is if I'm out camping or hiking is I throw a J-pole antenna in a tree, and I'd like to be able to use that if I bought one of these as well. I mean, when I first saw this radio, I'm like, hey, 10 watts. Imagine how far I'm going to be able to get with a J-pole up in the tree. Um, if that's something that's taken away from me, I, I, I'm probably not going to consider this radio, which is surprising because this was full-on a radio that I was going to buy. Uh, I was even going into today, Amazon Prime Day, saying, hey, if this radio is on deal, I'm buying it. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people aren't going to say, hey, Smoking Ape's a credible guy in the community, blah, blah, blah. So I did do some, some research, and I, and I mentioned on some posts on um, Facebook, and you can check them out for yourselves. But here's John Micklore, and uh, he's from Micklore.com, which is, you know, he's kind of like the, uh, the Pope of Chinese handheld uh, radios. And right here he says, this is something I also noticed and mentioned in my review, power into the calibrated bird Termalite, Termaline. I noticed this on high power, but on UHF only, the power would fluctuate from 8 watts to 15 watts and then hover around 10. Apparently it's not just mine. So I'm not trying to um, beg to a higher authority, but I am saying that there's other people who have more credibility in the ham world than I do saying that there's a potential issue here. And I just wanted to point that out. So that brings us on to the BTEC uh, DMR6X2. Um, take a look at some pros for this. A front front panel programmable, uh, dual band, water resistant. So this isn't waterproof, it's water resistant, which I understand is rain and splashing, um, which will probably work. This radio is a little bit smaller than the iLunes. And, and uh, again, as I mentioned, I'm looking for something that's a daily carry. So uh, portability is kind of important. I didn't put that in my uh, must-have and nice-to-haves. But, uh, you know, a smaller, lighter radio is, is cooler, in my opinion. Has GPS. It has the large user ID database. Ships with extra is probably the most. It comes with a programming cable, extra battery. Um, pretty good value. It's 169 170 bucks. Cons, uh, Windows only support. We've covered that. It has a direct conversion receiver, and we've covered that. This is a newer radio, um, very limited reviews, and uh, limited community support. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it is a BTEC, and people probably associate it with Balfung, which is unfortunate. Um, it's a newer version of the Anytone AT D686 um, UV. It's my understanding Anytone makes this for, for uh, BTEC. Um, the next one, the last one on the list, is really the Anytone AT-D686UV. Uh, um, as I mentioned, this is a pretty popular radio in certain pockets across the United States. Front panel, programmable, dual band, GPS, user um, ID database. Again, splash resistant, water resistant. Shifts with a programming cable, I'm uh, sorry, programming cable. Positive reviews, large community support. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of information about this radio on the internet. Cons, Windows only support, um, direct driver receiver, and it's just an older version of the BTEC DMR6X2. So the cons aren't really long on this list, and you would say, hey, you know what, based off the pros and the cons, this is the radio. This is the one you want to get, and uh, I have a hard time uh, arguing with that. The only thing that I would say is, is that I feel that perhaps the BTEC being the newer version of this is going to have a better roadmap or future in front of it. 
and uh, maybe there's some things with this Anytone that are going to be deprecated, and maybe this isn't going to be a good option two years from now. So if I buy a radio, I want to be able to use it for a while. Anyhow, that's it. Um, what I want to say is thanks for watching, especially if you held in for this long. If you like this video, go ahead and click a thumbs up or subscribe if you want to see similar content. And go ahead and give me some contents down below. What you think is a good radio, maybe there's a radio that you have, or maybe one of the ones that uh, I'm not considering. I'm overlooking something. Anyhow, thanks everybody. Really appreciate it.